This is a video on phylogeny and cladograms for the Science GED. So these diagrams here um, are, are called cladograms. And what they do is they show the relationship between organisms. Sometimes you know how they're related, and other times it's like this where um, there's nothing really to to identify what is the difference between these different organisms, but we can still determine a fair amount of information from this. And so if you look, you've got a jellyfish, fish, salamander, mouse, and monkey. And here you have this line that is continuing to go from the common ancestor, and it looks like it goes all the way to the monkey, but it is actually representing the relationship between these organisms, how closely related they are. So Let's look at the questions down here. Which of the following statements regarding the phylogenetic tree is correct? So A says that only the jellyfish shares DNA with the common ancestor. Um, hopefully you realize all of these organisms are going to have DNA, and they all probably share a significant amount of DNA. Um, and so we don't know the common ancestor. We don't. Maybe we're talking about... Um, something that no longer exists, bacteria, or um, we don't really know, and it doesn't really matter. The point being that there is going to be consistency uh, from all of these organisms, okay? So A is going to be wrong. B says the jellyfish is more closely related to the mouse than the salamander. So here's the jellyfish, and the salamander is more is closer to it than it is the mouse. So the jellyfish is going to be more closely related to the salamander compared to the mouse because it's further along. Okay, the mouse is further along, so it's it's more distant. And so B is wrong, okay, because it says that the jellyfish is more closely related to the mouse. It's actually the other way around. C says the monkey is most closely related to the mouse. Um, that would make sense if we're only comparing the, the organisms here in the cladogram. The monkey is most closely related to the mouse, then the salamander, then the fish, then the jellyfish. All right, so C sounds correct. Let's look at D. The monkey directly evolved from the mouse. Um, this statement is often something when we talk about evolution or relationships between organisms that people get wrong. Uh, we're not saying here that the monkey evolved from the mouse or that the mouse evolved from the salamander or the salamander evolved from the fish. It's all just about um, how closely related they are. This idea of evolving from, it gets to be a little um, sticky. It's not really what we're saying when we talk about evolution. Um, we're, we're saying that there's a common ancestor at, um, at this point here, that the mouse and the monkey have a common ancestor. And same thing here. We can say that the salamander, the mouse, and the monkey all have a common ancestor at this point here in time. We don't know what it is. Or we're, not, we're not indicating what it is. We're not saying that they evolved from each other. All right? So... The correct answer is, in fact, C, um, the monkey is most closely related to the mouse. All right, so here is another way of representing relationships between organisms. So in this particular one, we have, these are the species, okay? We have species A, B, C, um, sorry, and D. And so we have the common ancestor here. And now what we're saying, we don't know what the species are, but we do know how they are differentiated. So at this point in time, um, D sort of branched off, species D branched off, and then species A, B, and C all have lungs. So D does not have lungs. And then if you look at this one, C branches off because it doesn't have nails, like fingernails or or claws, or however you want to think of it, right? Um, and then there's another branch off. B does have lungs, does have nails, but doesn't have fur. And species A has lungs, has nails, and has fur, where species D has none of those. And so you're still being able to compare the relationship between the different species, 
But now we're looking at the actual actual characteristics of those. So let's go through the the different statements. A says that species D has lungs, nails, and fur. N no, in fact, it has none of those. Species C has lungs and nails, but no fur. Um, let's look at that. Species C has lungs. Um, that's true. And nails, but it doesn't have nails. You can see right here, it splits off. C does not have nails. So uh, B is not correct. C says species A only has fur, but not lungs or nails. Um, it looks like this might be confusing because fur is so closely tied to, to A, but it's also going to have nails and lungs. Let's look at D. Species B has lungs and nails, but no fur. So yes, if you follow it along, it will have lungs, it'll have nails, but no fur. And so the correct answer is D. All right, question, uh, the third question here. So at the top you have amino acid sequence and you have a dog, cat, and a bird. And so you don't need to know these amino acid sequences, what these actually mean. You just have to be able to look at them and say, okay, which ones are similar and which ones are different. Uh, so I'll get to that in a second. Let's look at the question. It says, given the amino acid sequence above, which cladogram most accurately depicts the relationship between the animals? So you have four choices, A, B, C, and D here. Um, and if you notice, you've got, uh, for most of them, you have like two that are closely related or close in proximity, and then one that's kind of distant with the exception of C, okay? So what is happening in C is you're saying the bird and the cat and the dog are all equally similar and equally different. If we look at A, A says that the dog is more different than the bird and the cat. In other words, the bird and the cat are more closely related than they are to the dog. B is saying that the bird is most different and the dog and the cat are most similar. D is saying the cat is most different and the dog and the bird are most similar. So now let's go back up here to the amino acid sequence. If you look at the dog and the cat, um, this is arginine, lysine, tryptophan, and leucine, um, and then these two here are different. But if you look at the bird, the first two are similar, okay, but then the, the remaining three are all different. And so the bird is, is the one that is the most different. The dog and the cat amino acid sequence is um, quite similar. And so if you're not familiar, the amino acid sequence represents, uh, it's what makes up proteins. And again, you don't necessarily need to know that. You just need to be able to look at these and compare them. Or the example here is similar enough that you probably could just deduce it yourself, right? That a dog and a cat are more similar than they are to the bird. And so um, B is going to be the correct answer. And so just a word on these cladograms. You might not see these on the GED, but test makers do tend to like these type of questions because it's about reading charts and diagrams and using logical thinking and reasoning. And so it they do frequently come up on standardized tests. So hopefully this helps you on the science GED and good luck. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like this video if you found it valuable and subscribe if you would like to see more videos like these. Visit the link below to passtheged.org to see more videos and learning opportunities that will help you get the highest passing score on the GED. And good luck.